Hello viewers and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to take you on a complete tour of Terminal 1 at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. I'll bring you along with me as I walk the entire length of the terminal. That's concourses A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Let's go. We'll start our tour today in the parking lot going down an escalator as I prepare to take a short tram ride to Terminal 1. Delta Airlines is the primary carrier here, and this is one of Delta's hubs, but this terminal also houses flights for Aer Lingus, Air Canada, Air Choice One, Air France, Alaska, American, Boutique Air, Denver Air, KLM, Spirit, and United. So I'm on the tram and it's going to take me directly to the terminal. I don't need to go outdoors at all. This tram ride is landside and it's a very short trip. You hop on and you hop off. Its terminus is a lower level of Terminal 1. This is Terminal 1. Please exit the tram. There's a check-in area right here on the lower level. It's actually closed right now, but you can actually avoid some of the crowds. The check-in area down here is only for Delta Airlines, and there's a larger check-in area on the main departures level, as well as check-in desks for all of the other carriers in Terminal 1. I'm now in the escalator going up one level to the main departures hall with check-in and bag drop desks for all of the carriers operating out of this terminal. While Delta has the majority of flights here, since there are many other carriers, there are many check-in desks for each of them. This here is a brand new art installation in the departures hall of the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. Delta offers a self-tag bag drop option to avoid lines. I'm going to work my way to the TSA checkpoint so we can explore everything airside. There are actually two TSA checkpoints on both sides of the departures hall. I'm going to use the checkpoint near the Delta check-in desks. Today, I'll be going through security by clear. So I entered TSA through a checkpoint that leads me to an area where there are a bunch of stores and restaurants. It's a little bit tight looking, but if you continue down a little bit further, here is the big ball at MSP Airport. All right, so we are in pandemic time, so unfortunately some of the restaurants like the one behind me is closed, but there are still options for dining. There's a food court over here, and a few restaurants are offering some food to passengers. The mall is great. We're actually not that far away from the Mall of America, so this kind of gives you a feel of what's right outside the door of the MSP Airport. If you're looking for a quick bite, you'll want to head to the food court. But what drives me to this area are the large windows overlooking the ramp between the E and F gates. Traffic at this point was rather light, and I'm filming this during a pandemic, but it is a great place to do some plane spotting. The mall is a really great place to look at airplanes while you're eating. There are several food establishments that are closed during the pandemic while others remain open. MSP is a great food airport and despite the closures, you'll still be able to get some excellent food. There's also some great shopping in the mall. Sometimes you forget you're actually in an airport and you think you're in a mall, but this is MSP. Lake One is a restaurant that I like to dine in a lot, but it is closed right now during the pandemic. I think it's closed because some of these seats here are in a very, very public area. This was a great area for dining and people watching, but now it's just an empty space. The variety of stores is quite unique for an airport. There are even spaces for live entertainment, but no one was performing during the time of my visit. At the end of the mall is an atrium area, which is actually an entry point for the TSA checkpoint that I did not go through today. All right, so we're leaving the mall area now, and I'm gonna let you in on a secret here at MSP Airport. Most people are completely unaware of this, but there's kind of a hideaway spot that nobody knows about. All right, to get there, we're gonna walk into the D gate area. The D-Gates are close to the mall, and it's necessary to pass by some food establishments to get there. All of the six D-Gates share one common gatehouse area in the shape of a rectangle. Shh. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a secret right now. Do you see that staircase behind me? 
There's absolutely no sign there and the staircase goes up. Now, it looks like this may be an area that you're not supposed to go to, but it's an area that's completely open to the public. And we're gonna go up those stairs now. This is the only set of stairs that you'll find at the airside portion of the terminal and there's no elevator to go where we're going. All right, let's do this for the surprise that awaits at the very top. observation deck at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. There's not a single person up here and the views of the ramp and the runway area are just absolutely amazing. It is a fantastic place to go if you're waiting for your flight and you want to check out some airplanes. It's in the D-gate area. All you have to do is go up those stairs. This is a great place to be before any flight at MSP. There's nobody here. All right, let's head back on down and check out some of the other aspects of MSP. All right, don't let everybody in on that secret because it's gonna to get too crowded if everybody watches this. Okay, I'm out of the D gates and just behind me is the tram that goes all the way down the C concourse where you can also get to the A gates and the B gates. But for now, we're just going to walk. This is a very long concourse which starts at gate C1 and ends at gate C27 before providing access to the A and B gates. Food is very plentiful along the sea gates with many dining options along the way. Just past gate C1 is a Delta customer service area where passengers can communicate with Delta customer service agents. The airport is in the process of installing some newer gates like the one that you see behind me here at C2. I'm not kidding when I say this airport has a lot of food options. No matter what your taste is, you can be sure this terminal has got something for you. This concourse has many moving sidewalks, but I'm choosing to walk so you can see more. Over by gate C4 is Prairie Market. Unfortunately, it looks like it's closed due to the pandemic, but I'm hoping that'll be back soon. You can always get a ride in an airport agent's vehicle if you want to be seated while moving. We're now in the gates C4 through C11 area, which has a more private feel. This area includes some nice artwork. These gates are a little bit more secluded from the moving walkway and have less passing by pedestrian traffic. In this area is a wine restaurant and market. We'll now head back out towards the moving walkway by gate C7, but just because we're headed back towards the pedestrian walkway doesn't mean we're going to encounter a hustle bustle. Just past gate C7 is an art exhibit in a long corridor, which honestly is another great place to relax between flights. There's only one of me, but we've got the twins behind me. And midway down the sea concourse is the Midway tram station for the Seagates. It's in the same area where we find one of two Delta Sky Clubs at MSP. I do have access, but I'll save my visit for another time. We've got a lot more to cover today, like this play area, which is designed for some of the younger passengers at MSP. All right, I know it's for kids, but I kind of want to go on that big jet 747. 
Just past that area is another vast atrium that's well appointed, and yes, you guessed it, there are even more food options available here. You just can't go hungry at this airport. And just behind me out that window is a walkway that leads to the G gates on the other side of the airport. We'll go over that bridge later when we go to the G gates. In the meantime, here's the view from gate C14. We'll continue our walk further down by walking next to the moving sidewalks. I have to say that each of the gate areas at MSP are very, very spacious, so social distancing is not a very big problem during the pandemic. There's even a second art exhibit on this concourse. During the time of my visit, the exhibit was featuring art of the upper Midwest, the region of the United States that Minnesota is part of. This area is very soothing, and it even includes a small movie theater that rotates through various films. You really don't see this in many airports. It's a very relaxing place here. People are watching a movie about Minnesota. Just past that is a TSA pre-check enrollment center, and if we look to the right, we can catch a glimpse of the tram. We'll go on the tram later. And if we look out the window here, we can see a bridge. That bridge leads to the Intercontinental Hotel. The hotel actually has its own access point directly to the terminal via that bridge. C-27, the end of the C concourse. What's up next? The A and the B gates. And at the end of the C concourse, you'll also find the final stop of the tram. At this point, where you see another restaurant, we have the option to visit the B gates or the A gates. Both gates handle smaller regional jets, and we'll visit the B gates, which are in a satellite, first. We're now going to go underground to visit the B gates. A lot of the regional jets operate out of the B gates, and in order to get there, we're actually descending. We'll be going below the ramp of the uh, tunnel, and then emerging on the other side to the B gates. Airplanes are taxiing overhead. All right, that was a very short walk across the tunnel and we're now going back up again to see the B gates. The B gates have a distinct look from the other gates at MSP, but when we get to the A gates, you'll see how similar the two are. It's a very simple layout here, and since the aircraft using these gates are very small, the gate areas are also very small. All right, we're in the B gate area. That's actually the A gate area on the other side. We'll go visit that in a moment, but let's just check out this concourse here. This is one of the most simple gate areas at this terminal and the furthest away from the busy mall area. The waiting area in the B gates is actually quite small, but as you can see, the airplane behind me is quite small. Large aircraft do not use this concourse at all. Both the B gates and the A gates come to an abrupt end at the very far end. All right, I've made it to the very end of the B gates. Time to turn around and head in the other direction. Okay, we're gonna save a little bit of time on the way back. There's actually an escalator right over there where we can go downstairs and bypass all the gates to get back to the tunnel area. Those are the A gates on the other side, and that's our next destination. The escalator leads to a moving sidewalk area below that runs just over half the length of the B gates. And here's the moving sidewalk. You can take it in either direction to save time if your gate is at the far end of the B concourse. This is as remote as you can get in the terminal. This area is below ground and has no amenities. Its purpose is to help speed up your travel time in the B concourse and helps if you don't want to walk. So this is just kind of a quick and easy way to bypass the gate area upstairs as we work our way back towards the main terminal area. A quick left-hand turn brings you right back to the moving sidewalks in the underground tunnel. We're now back in the atrium in the main portion of the terminal building where the tram ends, and we're going to head to the left to check out gates A1 to A14 in the A concourse. 
As we approach the A gates, you can see here that this food area here is completely shuttered due to the pandemic. The A concourse is very simple with all gates on the left side. There's also a moving sidewalk on the right side that you can take till around gate A9. After that, it's all walking to the very end. Like the B gates, this concourse is very bright and airy as there are windows on both sides. This definitely improves the experience as this is the most narrow concourse in the entire terminal. The gatehouses are small, and most of the gates are very similar in appearance here. It's almost entirely used by very small regional jets, as larger airplanes just can't fit into the small ramp space between the A and B concourses. Visible here on the left-hand side is the ramp and the B concourse. I visited the A gates during a lull. There were no arrivals or departures at all in the A gates when I was there. Unlike in the B-Gate area, there's a place for food, drinks, and entertainment around gate A9. This is the furthest away place for food in the entire terminal. After this, you're just going to find more gates. It's at this place where the moving sidewalk terminates, and if you look all the way down, you can see the end wall of the terminal building. Alright, we're almost at the very end, and I can tell you I'm getting a lot of good exercise. While walking along the A concourse, the right-hand side provides a close-up view of the entry road to Terminal 1. A14. I did a lot of walking, but I made it to the very end. There's nowhere else to go but back. Here's a CRJ-200 at an A-gate waiting for its next flight. Because the way out of the A-gate area is the same way as the way in, I decided that this time around I could give myself a break and take the moving sidewalk back. There is still a lot more to cover of this huge terminal. The next area to visit are the G-gates, which is accessible from the middle of the C concourse. But because I already covered all of the C-gates, I'm going to take the train to the midway point, which will put me in the right place to take the footbridge to the G-gates. Please hold on. The tram is departing the station. The tram runs the entire length of the C concourse. One tram runs in each direction, sharing the same track. However, the track splits at the midway point where their paths merge, and it's at this point where the midway tram stop is located. I'm going to get off at the midway point. The track is outdoors and also runs along the road to access Terminal 1, but it's only accessible to passengers that are on the airside. It's a great feature at MSP, especially when you need to get to your gate quickly. All right, just got off the train at the midway point. Let's go check out the G gates. Once back in the terminal, it's necessary to go up the escalator in the food atrium area that will bring me to the long bridge to the other side of the terminal. As soon as you get to the top, you can see the long corridor to the G gates. All right, not a lot to see here, which is why I am walking on the moving sidewalk. And in about a minute or so, I will arrive at the G gate area. The bridge leads you to a cluster of gates at the end of the G concourse. These are gates G17 to 22. As you can see, this area is undergoing some major construction during the time of my visit. Normally, you'd find several places to eat here, but that is not the case now as everything is being renovated. The G gates are broken down into five separate clusters, which are connected by long walkways. The largest clusters are located at both far ends of the concourse. In this area, a new Delta Sky Club is also being built. I trust that after construction, this area is going to look amazing. As I continue towards the end of the G gates, there's nowhere to go but back, so I'll continue down the G concourse in the direction of the F gates. After walking down a makeshift walkway, I've come across the next cluster of gates, G14 and G15. This area includes a restaurant as well as a store for purchasing items for your flight. You can even order food in the seating area, which is bright and airy, and offers a great view of runway 12 right, 30 left. It's time to move on to the next gate cluster, gates G11 to 13 via moving sidewalk. This area is actually quite similar to the gate cluster we just came from, with similar dining and purchasing options. Continuing on to the next moving sidewalk section affords great views of the ramp as we make our way to the next gate cluster, gates G9 and G10. 
This cluster is the smallest of the G-Gates and only has one basic option for dining, which was closed at the time I was there. We're now on the final stretch before we reach the last cluster of G-Gates. All right, in this stretch of the G-Gates, you can see that there's a wall off to the side over here. The gates on that side are used for international arriving flights. All passengers must clear customs and immigrations before they actually go into the terminal area for their connecting flight or get released into the general public. Just before we reach the end of this walkway, I get off the last moving sidewalk that I'll take on my trip around the terminal today. There's always a surprise in this terminal, and I'm about to discover something new just off to my left. And here's a bit of a diversion along the G concourse. All over the world, wildlife is in trouble. Loss of natural habitats combined with an increasing demand it's no surprise that there's another restaurant here in the G concourse. Okay, we're gonna walk to a little section of the G gates where most of the international flights depart from, and then we'll head over to the F gates. In order to get to the last cluster of G gates, gates G1 to G6, you have to walk through an area where you're completely surrounded by food for purchase. Many of the flights leaving this gate area are longer flights, so this provides an opportunity for a nice meal purchase before your journey. There's also a restaurant off to my right, but it was closed during my visit. Mini bar, get it? We're in Minneapolis. We're done with the G gates, but we're not done with our tour today. Let's head on over to the F gates. All right, we're almost at the F gates. The F gates consists of gates F1 to F18 with gates on both sides. It starts off with the Delta customer service desk on the right. This is a very busy gate area and it's within close distance of the mall. The first set of dining options are grab and go, but there are a lot more options as we continue down the F gates. The F gates can be a pretty busy concourse at times. And it wouldn't be MSP without exhibitions. And just like I saw in other areas of the airport, several dining options were closed due to the ongoing pandemic. With some of the restaurants actually closed, there's quite a bit of a line here at the food court right in the middle of the F concourse. And there are still restaurants that even offer table service in this more condensed area of the airport. The F gates have a unique look and the gates themselves are able to handle a variety of aircraft types, including wide bodies. All right, we're here at the very end of the F gates. There's a lot of flights that are taking off right now, and Delta is actually using some larger aircraft during the pandemic, so there's more people in this area because the airplanes are bigger. And of course, at the end of the F gates, we find another restaurant. All right, we've got one more concourse to cover before we finish our tour of Terminal 1 here at MSP. There's even a spa, which was closed during the time of my visit. All right, the last and final stop on this tour are the E gates. And in order to get there, we're going to walk through the mall one more time. On the way there, we pass by another Delta Sky Club. Again, I'll save my visit to this Sky Club for another trip to MSP. There's also a restaurant here, and we are now back in the wide open space of the Terminal 1 Mall. All right, I just walked to the mall, and we'll end our tour today at the E-Gates. Similar to the F gates, the E gates protrude from the mall area and house gates E1 to E16. This is the only concourse that Delta does not operate from, and here you'll find a variety of airlines. Just like F, the E gates are on both sides of the concourse. There's plenty of room in the gatehouse areas here. 
Note the special markings on the seats advising you to skip a seat due to the pandemic. This is one of my favorite parts of MSP, Food Truck Alley. This is so unique for an airport. With the rise in popularity of food trucks, MSP Airport brought this outdoor concept indoors. When visiting Food Truck Alley, you feel like you're somewhere else, and you might as well be in another country as the food trucks offer international cuisine here. I've eaten here several times and everything I had was absolutely delicious. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in an airport anywhere. It's a great diversion. Even if you're not buying anything, you should still take the time to walk around this spot. We still have a few more items to explore, so we'll move on now. There's some great food in the econ course, but unfortunately, many of the stores are closed because of the pandemic. We're on our way to the very end of the econ course, and these are some of the gatehouses that we're passing by on our way there. There's also a store that provides a very local touch, reminding you that you're in the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. The windows at the very end mark the end of the econ course. There are many gates that are situated at the end, and this area widens out a bit to accommodate a larger gatehouse area. There are two options for dining here. And here we are at the very end of the econ course. Well, that was a lot of walking. I have finally made it to the very end of the econ course here at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. I really hope you enjoyed this tour today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.